Hello everyone, I am Bradley Sword, Associate Professor of Computer and Information Science at the College of DuPage in Glen Ellen, Illinois. And this video today is going to take a look at uh, Activity 2 Answers Examples for Unsigned Binary Decimal and Hexadecimal Representations for Microprocessor Assembly Language Course. So um, you probably have already done this because you are seeing this after the assignment is due. So what are we doing here for question 1? Perform this hexadecimal addition. And so there's many ways to do many of these problems. I'm just going to go through if, if, if my way of doing things matches with yours, great. If not, at least I showed you something different, a different way to do things. I'm trying to keep it simple for everybody, not necessarily like slick and cool and efficient, just an algorithm that you can solve, you know, that you can use to solve every time. So we have this chart here. This is just the easy chart here. So B is an 11 in hexadecimal code because we run out of digits as we go from 0 to 9. So A is 10, 11 is B. So I can fill that in if it makes you feel better. 11 plus 9 is 20. That's off our chart here because it's bigger than 15. So now we have to move into two hexadecimal digits. Just like if I added 6 plus 7, I'd get 13. So 20... I'm not going you know, there are other videos of mine to explain what, how 20 turns into 14 in hex. You've got to remember this is hex. And so what happens is the 4 stays, out, stays down here and the 1 moves its way up. I guess I can bold that. There we go. Center that. Nope, they're not centered. But anyway, you get the point because 20 is 1, 4, 16 plus 4. So 8 plus 1 plus 1 is 10. And you're... To say that you're fighting all these years of base 10 math to put a zero there, but that's not right. It's an A because A is 10. And so there's no, there's no carry because we didn't go past 15. We didn't go 16 or above. So there's no carry. So 5 plus 4 is 9 pretty much in that same number system. So that is how you would do problem 1. You get the answer 9A4. Let's move on to number 2. Okay, so moving forward here, this number here, 11001010, what does that turn into as I work my way through? I was expecting that to be a little larger. There we go. And so as we go, we say every bit, I'm not going to break this down into the other things here, but the, the, the least significant bit is the ones bit, and then everything else is a factor of two, right? Power of two, just like everything to the left of in decimal format is a power of ten. Because this would be, you know, the, you have the ones digits, the tens, the hundreds, the thousands. Well, here in binary, you have the ones, the twos, the fours, 8, 16, 32, 64, and 128. And so since it's binary, it's off or on, we pretty much only have to worry about the ones. So I say, okay, this, is the, this one is a two, because it's the twos bit. Four, eight, okay, eight. 16, 32, 64 is a one, and 128 is a one. And if I just sum up these things, what do I get? I get 202 for my answer. That's what unsigned decimal representation of this number is. Moving on to number 3 here. So I have 10100001 plus 10001111. So pretty simple stuff here. There's only four ways we can go. We can go 0 plus 0 is 0. 0 plus 1 is 1. 1 plus 0 is 1. And 1 plus 1 is 10 in binary or 2. So this is this is the only challenging one out of everything. We're doing this bitwise and we're doing this like we do fourth grade edition. 1 plus 1 is 0, carry the 1. And so this becomes 1 plus 0 plus 1. This adds up to 2, which is 1, 0 again. And so 1 plus 0 plus 1, same thing as a minute ago here, a second ago. So that with the carry over. So now 1 plus 0 plus 0, that's a 1 with no carry because we didn't get a 1, 0 or 1, 1 or anything. So now zero, 0 plus 0 is 0, 1 plus 0 is 1, 0 plus 1 is 1, 1 plus 0 is 1. And that should get us the answer for number 3. All right, for problem number 4, how many binary bits does it take to represent the number 501? Well, there are many ways to do this. One way is just, you know, blurt it out and chain, turn it into binary and figure out how many bits you need. I mean, that one, you know, that's very simple. Use the divide by 2 method and reverse the bits and just figure out how many divisions you had to do to get down to zero. It's pretty much that. Uh, another way here is you can use a, basically a log chart, log base 2. Computer science loves log base 2. And you can see here the number 1 is the largest 1-bit number. The number 3 is the largest 2-bit and so forth and so on. 
And what you're doing is you're looking for a value between, uh, your value between two digits here, so or two number of bits. So 501 is a number between 255 and 511, so it's going to need nine bits. It's, it's going to need like eight point something bits if you do the log base two on that, of what's the log base two of 501, and you just use the ceiling function to work your way, your, work your way up to go, up. Oh, I need nine bits because I need 256 plus this, plus that, plus whatever, to get myself to be 511, or 501, sorry. So just, and so you just gotta watch out because this is, you know, this, the largest number is two to the n minus one, right? So, so there you go. So that's all there is to it for that. I know the, the wording on this is, is usually strange for a lot of students, but there's nothing really to that problem whatsoever. Okay, and for problem number five, we're converting from hex to binary, or binary to hex, and it really doesn't matter one way or the other. This is pretty much the easiest way to go about this. If you have a chart, it's just translating one to another, just a one to one, or a one to four, or a four to one translation. So every four digits of binary will equal one digit of hex, and on the other way, one digit of hex translates into four digits of binary. So one zero zero one, that is a nine, and then zero one one one, that is a seven. Zero zero one zero, that's a two, and one zero one zero, that's ten, that translates to A. And so the answer to that problem is nine seven two A. And that's how you would work your way back. If I had nine seven two A and I go, well, what is this in binary? You would just go nine is nine, there's one zero zero one, seven is zero one one one, two is zero zero one zero, and A is one zero one zero. And you do have to include the zeros because you are filling in four digits no matter what. So you do front pad these. So you got to watch out. Sometimes you don't front pad with zeros and sometimes you do. And you're going to see as we go through, especially with uh, the assembly language portion of the actual assembly language class, that that is a big deal because if I have a 32-bit number, I better fill in all those extra bits. The, I better front load if I want to put two in there. Otherwise, I'm going to leave garbage in my register and I'm going to have garbage for everything else. That I Moving on to question six. If I have the number 384 and I want to convert that into binary, how do I go about doing that? And so the divide by two method is a great way. The, there's other ways to do it, of course. And just the, the way that simplifies this thing the most. If I, if I take 384 and I take this and I divide by 2, I get 192. And if I take this number here and I divide, mod this by 2, I get 0. So 384 divided by 2 is 192 remainder 0. And then I bring this number down and I do it again. And I go 192 divided by uh, 2 is 96 remainder 0, and if I do this again, I get 96 divided by 2 is 48 remainder 0, and then I get 48 divided by 2 is 24 remainder 0. Oh my goodness, what are we doing here, right? And now I get 20, 24 divided by uh, 2 is 12 remainder 0, and then 12 is 6 remainder 0. Finally, 6 is 3 remainder 0, 3 is 1.5, so just saying like, uh, integer this. I, I don't know. Can you integer this in? I think you can. I should have been integering it the whole time, but oh well, such is life. And so three divided by two is one remainder one. And now the final step here to finish this thing off is I get you know one divided by two is zero remainder one. And as we said, for whatever reason, the you take the remainders in reverse order, and there's your answer. So it's one one. I gotta make sure I do the number of zeros right. One two three four five six seven zeros. That is the answer, because this is the, if this is the ones bit and the two four eight sixteen thirty two sixty four, it's nothing but a hundred and twenty eight plus two hundred and fifty six gets me my answer of three hundred eighty four is what we started with, and so this works with for hex and this also works for binary. Pretty much, it works for any number system. But the divide by two method, keeping the remainders and then working with the quotients till I get down to zero, that's exactly how we go about. That is the that is the surefire way to go about doing this. It's tedious as all heck, but it gets you the answer correctly every time as long as you don't do any tedium. So for question seven, we're doing hexadecimal subtraction. Subtraction is done exactly the same as base ten. It's just harder because we're not used to the extra digits, the extra letters, and carrying over 16s instead of 10s, and so forth and so on. 
So we got to remember here, 9 minus e. What, what is e but 14? So I definitely have to do a carryover effect here. And so I do that the same. A is a 10, and to carry over, I subtract 1 off. A becomes a 9, and I move this over, and this becomes a 19, right? Just like in base 10 math. But we have to remember that this 1 is, this isn't 19 in base 10. This is 19 in hex. So this is actually a 25. Because, right, one, you know, and this E is actually 14. So we have to say, okay, 25 minus 14 is actually 11, and 11 is a B. So we have to watch out for that here. I know it's tricky. I didn't, you know, it's jiggery pokery, it's magic, right? But that's exactly how we have to work this, you know, one of the ways we work this down. It's just, it's just the same if I had like you know, 86 and 57. Like 6 minus 7, I have, to, I have to turn this 8 into a 7, bring the 10 over, and then 16 minus 7 gets me the 9, and then 7 minus 5 gets me the 2. It's the same deal, but we're doing it in base 16 instead of base. And then all the other math is, is very simple. 9 minus 8 is 1. A, which is 10. 10 minus, and, you know, this base 10, that's base 10 stuff. 10 minus 8 is 2. A minus 8 is 2. 21B is the answer for number 7. And so again, it gets it's a little tricky because it's just it's you know like it's real easy to go too fast and just forget you're working in base 16 and ruin everything. So anyway, so that's question 7 and then the final problem here is what to do with 847 and this is in hex. I'm sorry, 842. 842. And so we can break this into three digits. 8 Four, two, right? So, and so, just like if this was ba if this was in base ten, this would be eight hundred and forty-two. This would be the ones digit. This would be the tens digit. This would be the the hundreds digit. And that's how you would make eight hundred forty-two. But we're dealing in sixteens, so this is still the ones digit. This is now the sixteens digit. Again, remember every hex digit can go up to fifteen. So when I get sixteen, that's when I add the second digit. And then the same thing goes here, where this is 256. And so this is the 1's digit, this is the 16's digit, this is the 256's digit, and now I multiply them together, and the math gets a little more tricky because we're not used to these numbers, especially, if, you know, above 12. My times table in third grade went up to uh, 12 by 12. I don't know what years did. But now I have three numbers, and then I'm just going to sum them together to get my answer, because it's this times this, plus this times this, plus this times this, and I get the answer of 2,114. And let me see what I get here. 842 in, oops, 42 in, and I get 2,114. And lo and behold, I got it the first time. I don't have to redo it on my video here. So that's how you do these basic problems. The other video goes into more detail. I would just kind of just, just fly in through for the most part here in 10 minutes or 12 minutes, go through these problems. And so this uh, chapter two here, or week two, is done. We've done unsigned binary decimal and hexadecimal. And now activity three will get a little more tricky because now we're going to throw in signed values for this. The negative sign for, for decimal, but there's no such thing as a negative for binary or hexadecimal. So we're going to have to introduce two's complement, and we're going to have to introduce uh, you know, new, new mechanisms to make sure that I can translate between the different number systems in a, on a signed basis correctly. So as always, thanks for sticking it out here. If you have, oops, excuse me, if you have any questions, please uh, email me at swordb at cod.edu or comment below, and I'll get back to you as soon as I can. Thank you. Have a good day. See you guys around.